But hey, <laughs> hi everyone! Welcome, 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 welcome back welcome. to Nat One Fun, ladies and gentlemen. giant 20 25 foot tall shadow uh, i immediately turn around and run <laughs> and soon we bust open the door <laughs> ah, ah! you're back you drunken fool why does everyone here know my name the only reason you even know is because of your stupid application process don't use my name in public ian Begins to kind of like walk downstairs, sits in the chair next to you. Hey, welcome back. Leiden over there, uh, she say anything about me while you were gone? Were you worried oh, about I was... Ian? <laughs> just, you know, I just wanted to make sure you were alright. I had a, a scheduled delivery to make in East Haven uh, tomorrow. I didn't know if you guys wanted to tag along. I think it's safe to speak for the group and we'd love to tag along, thank you. Oh, hey, um, also, I heard that they are going to be having a, a celebration uh, soon in East Haven. Molly That's and Sarah, they, they're, they're super excited wonderful. about it, Wonderful. Why don't we go? Yeah. No, that's, that's great. I mean... If you wanted to, that's totally, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a, it's a, okay then. It's a, it's a date. It's a, it's a I mean, it's a, it, we, we can go, we'll, we'll, I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, you. The, the proprietor turns around. Hmm, yes, hello. Well, you see, you dip your head here into the water. <laughs> hey, you want to play a game? Joe Glassjaw. As you see a very skinny, puny guy kind of come out of the, uh, the crowd, crack his neck, and slam her hand, and it breaks the corner <laughs> yes. of the table off, causing the corner of the table to I break saw. off. Just leans back and places his hands behind him and like looks up towards the sky look at you gorgeous and you can play like nobody else you can bring a smile to a rock leoden you are something else have you heard of the tale of the pale lady a legend i swing at it with all your might and fear instilling the power within the strike and you are like stuck standing in front of you now you see the face of Torig as he stares back at you your axe buried deep within his neck down to his chest shakingly you drop your hands from the axe Alano, you know exactly what's going to happen. As Leoden jumps up for the edge, her arm slams into the edge and begins to... She tries to grab as she grabs onto nothing. Her gloves don't find purchase on anything and her arms... Phew, Olano, on her stomach, slides over the edge and grabs Leoden's arm as soon as, like, the tips of the fingers of her gloves come into contact. <gasps> no. So the color leaves her eyes. There's a bit of blue mist. She buries this thing down, cleaving it in half. As the creature screams out one last yelp. And finally it just cuts through half of its body, not even stopping at the rib cage and making its way down until finally it is cleaved in twine. Eyes open, mouth agape, and skin a pale gray blue. Ian stares lifelessly into the stars above. A large dagger of ice is seen punctured through his chest, most definitely his heart. Alano. I... Oh, what Sorry. is it? You're, you're gonna want to see this. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's Ian. What do you mean it's Ian? 
Get out of my way. Alanu kneels next to the grave. I will kill whoever did this. You would take note of a very beautiful looking white furred fox. And you can see his little black nose begins to like sniff like around the area. And he looks up at you. Do you have any rabbit? Name. Uh, uh, Cuckoo. Cuckoo Abata. The wind begins to pick up. His smile grows wide on his face. And suddenly upon you, a large wind. And the entire area is engulfed in a blizzard. I am going to just throw the go. knife of volcanic glass wide at his chest in the same point we found it on Ian. Yes! <laughs> and as she's throwing it out, she's going to say, I bow to no god. You see, lying down on the ground, half of a face. Half of the face that's missing is replaced by jutting crystals of ice coming out of the side. Where there would normally be gore, it's just these beautiful crystalline shards. You will never stop the rhyme. <laughs> Kinrava steps on the face. Suddenly, one of the rods bends over and hears as the reel is pulled. Trovis pulls back on his rod. Hey now, here we go. And he starts to pull it in. You can see a large red trout uh, head and tail begin to splash in the hole. Grab it, grab it grimly. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll just dive at the hole. Put your hands grimly. <laughs> no, in the mouth, grab it in the yep. mouth, damn oh. it. Oh, Yank it and pull it up. Oh. You like fly out and the fish goes like flying behind you and slides on the ice a good like two or three yards. You feel a tap on your shoulder. I'll turn to look. Is she about to play? Yes, I believe so. Um, you should really sit and watch. She's quite amazing. And she says, uh, care to dance? Um, unfortunately, Ali, I don't fancy myself much of a dancer. Grimly shoves him out of the chair. Oh. <laughs> Listen, Ali, I have to be 100% honest with you. I do have someone waiting for me at home. Well, I just, you know, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Great, and I'll go sit down. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> You're the right thing. Hawk good, too. Hawk good hunter. Oh, Hawk's a good hunter, are you? Uh, if Hawk's eat food, Hawk throw rock at food. Hawk good That's hunter. Different. May your innards be torn out by Amber Hook. The power found within the ice. <laughs> but you will soon learn your doom soars on dragon's wings and takes the pick and punctures his throat as it pierces through his mouth. I just push it in, against the wall with my foot and I pull both swords out and I just charge it and take both short swords and just drive it straight into the chest and like push up against the wall and I rip the swords out. Grimly, Kim starts running into the room, yells at you to hold up your shield and says, don't hate me. And suddenly <laughs> releases the magical energy from her hand. You're still kind of like blocking the, the shots from the creatures. I'd actually like to jump and lift my feet and just like crouch behind my shield. <laughs> Absolutely happens. Uh, you back up like one foot, jump up in the air and hide behind your shield by lifting your legs up to kind of gain uh, as much defense from the, the oncoming explosion. It strikes your shield like slow motion. You can see like the ice crystals begin to form where it hits. Boom! Explodes out in different directions from the shield causing the shards to pierce goosh, 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 all over, slamming into the creatures all around you, sending them all to the ground, writhing on the ground like... <laughs> what a cool move. I want to try and finesse it out. Okay. Boo! It explodes, and you can see the shards 
land over your head in an arc into the snow as they poke a few inches out of the snow in front of you. 22 points of damage. All right, I'm down. Ken Rava, <laughs> medicine check. That is 18. Abel, you stabilize. Leoden, I need another death saving throw from you, please. You have advantage on a medicine check, Grimly. 10. Holy fuck. You will get everyone killed. You didn't have to do anything if you don't actually like me. You could have just let me die. That doesn't mean that you give up on the other person that you're arguing with until they understand that even though you're arguing, you're truly out for the greater good. So what are y'all going to do about it? And despite Olano's frosty exterior, she does still like you. Many of the party do. I set my mandolin down and, like, hug Kinrava. Seeing just the sheer number of people in front of them, she's going to take out that oh, scroll of fireball. Yeah. <laughs> um, Let's hear it. This is going to hurt, but it will save your life. You understand the importance of keeping secrets when it comes to the arcane, no? In due time, our paths may align. Until then, strange looking uh, frozen doorway appears next to her and she winks at the group, steps through and disappears. We zoom into Brian's eyes and it takes us back to when Brian was a child. Brian is out trying to steal <laughs> apples away from a stall. Or you're like caught like on the arm and he gets disciplined by his parents and he hates his parents and he runs away from home he joins like a thieves guild goes on for months uh, and, and years as a thief uh, hating his life every day and cursing his parents for, for doing this uh, to him he finally gets to a point where he finds his way into Icewind Dale until finally the lights go out and he's stuck in the everlasting rhyme and he hates every single day of his existence and the last thing that you see kind of like in this memory is him talking to Kin Rava day in and day out as he hates her existence for being there, <laughs> allowing her to live. Every time she walks by, she belittles him and it hurts deep inside. And we, we zoom out uh, from his eyes. And as we zoom out from his eyes, he is already on the ground, motionless, drooling, and his eyes shut. I'll kneel down next to him. His eyes are just open. Yeah, his eyes are like wide open. Well, you go to close his eyes and then he just like, <laughs> he, he just reopens them. Just okay. pull the cloak over the front of them. So it's not as creepy. Yeah, I'll just cover his face and I'll start to, I'll start to smother him. <laughs> okay, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice knowing you. He's never made this noise before. Pull the plug. <laughs> To investigate, like, look at the statue closer. You walk forward and you Indra. can see that uh, Imdra has been turned to stone. Apparently, they are building a weapon directly to the south of us. A fortress. I fear they might make a move on ten towns. What's your name? My name is Brom. It is a pleasure to meet you. We did a That's thing! Not my finger. So, so with the 16, you both save. Um, but the damage is still there. Oh shit. I'm gonna be so glad to be able to quarter this cold Holy damage. Holy shit. Is it evident what these um, figures depict? Yes. These figures depict different parts of 10 towns. There is what looks to be some sort of like dotted line from your location in the mountains to each and every one of the towns. Who dares taunt these halls with their mere presence? I'm sorry. I failed you, Deep Dwera. You fool. I was never Deep Dwera to begin with. You have amounted to nothing, and you will return to nothing. Damn you! Ten towns will pay for this.
You get punched in the fucking face. And you're fucking furious. Oh, and you go. want oh. to fucking kill <sighs> Leoden. Uh, she'll just kind of look at Grimly like, do something. <laughs> So she goes in and she swipes her axe across, hitting it behind one of its legs um, to kind of make it come down closer to her. Once its head dips, she's going to jump up into the air with her axe above her hand and bring it straight down on the creature's head. You can see the entire body violently shaking. This might explode. <laughs> A thousand percent it's gonna explode. Everybody around him ducks out of the way and jumps out of the way. You hear the dragon make a horrific grinding sound <laughs> and what sound like two pieces of dry ice rubbing against one another. Jagged shards of black crystal. Boom! Fly off in all directions in a cacophonous blast. The dragon leaving behind tons of shardolin crystals some as big as wagon wheels and other as small as coffin nails. There is any chance of restoring your precious ten town. This would be it. Not only does it speak of changing the weather. But tales speak of a time-altering magic, possibly located in the city. A heavily armor-clad silver figure stands nearly 20 feet tall in front of you. A gigantic sword held vertically nearly the entire length of the figure with its point down, with both of the figure's gauntleted hands gripping it. And slowly walking up to your side, you see a familiar bluish-white snow fox. Is that your family? Oh, that is, that is my family, yeah. Keep them out of my domain. The shadow of a shapely woman begins to form and slowly inches towards you. Lena begins to come into view. And just to her side, hiding halfway behind one of her legs, you see what looks to be a small, frightened child. Alana, go meet your father. The lead drow in charge of this week's drill, Friska, holds her sword to your throat and leads you up. Weak. She signed in the silent drow hand language before striking you with a blindingly fast right hook, leaving you on the floor unconscious. You need to prove yourselves as warriors if we are to release any griffins in your custody. Olanu has spent many years with these creatures and barely has she proven her worth to them. But you've seen how wild these creatures can be to prove yourself. You will bring me the white cloak of Ugalai, the chieftain of the Thunlaka Laga tribe. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, um, my mother used to tell me that she was a jeweler. She used to tell me that we are all uncut gems that there is value and worth and potential, but that you need to cut away what isn't necessary and sometimes that can hurt. And I'm trying my best, but it's so hard. That would never hurt you, Lita. Never. And I'm gonna reach into my bag. I'm gonna pull out something that's wrapped in a little bit of leather. It's a little, it's a very simple brooch for a cloak. It's a sunburst made of polished walrus ivory um, with little bits of simple silver filigree that radiate outwards from a purple tourmaline gemstone set in the center. Leaving 
keep being, 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 keep being. But seriously, keep being your best selves. Here's to another year. Bye, guys.